welcome back to the Sippy and Yak Show. You're here with your boys Sippy and Yaks. And today we're here to talk to you about important, important issues. T- 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 One, two, three. Important, important issues. issues. Fuck me. That's what happens when you take a week off. Yeah. Uh, but why did we take a week but off? But why did we take a week off? Uh, we took a week off because, well, we made a thing. It was a very special project in the works. It was sure. It was a bit of a thing that we made, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. It, it took longer than we anticipated, and it took pretty much all of our energy and spare yeah. time. Amen. Uh, so we didn't have time to, well, we just didn't want to do a podcast because we we're fucking exhausted. Yeah. We, now, it what, wouldn't have been good. It would have been shit. What did we do? We made a rap. Yes, we made a rap. <laughs> Uh, we made a rap <laughs> and we that's, that's no that's all the information you get that's all the foreshadowing and the impressions it gets L- let me let me expand on that a little bit we we made a rap <laughs> we made a video for the rap yep um and then we put it on youtube it's mm. sh- theoretically on the assumption that we are good at uh time management yep which is unlikely. It uh, should be up by it should the time be, you hear this. Yeah. yeah, it should be up around the same time as this episode. We'll fucking find out. Go but and check it out on the YouTube. You might like it. It's pretty bad. It's a bit of a bit of a it's just a fuck around really, but we it was an idea that we had actually when we started this podcast. Fucking long. Uh, the names yeah. Sippy and Yaks came from uh, our our joke of making a terrible uh rap trap career. The oh, fuck is that where it came from? Yeah, yeah. I'd oh, actually that, completely forgotten. Yeah, when people yeah. asked me, I didn't know how to explain. That's how we came up with oh, the names, because uh, we were going to be amazing rappers. And well, it turns out we are. The more you know. Yeah. So we we before we get into the topic, I got a little story and a little event. We went to buy some beers for the podcast. As you know, we do like to indulge ourselves in in a few beers. But the amazing thing happened is I got free stuff. I got two free books, mm. and they are and these are not garbage free stuff, by the way. Yeah, these they are some actually, very yeah. nice. Yeah. Hard. Listen back to books. that. Listen to that back. That's, it's hard. That's a cover. It's man. so hard you can taste it. Uh, so the first book is Beers of the World, isn't it? Uh, something like that, or the best yeah. beer book, or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. But the other one's called Tasting Notes, and it's just a book full of you to review beers. And I was like, you know what? We could do that. Mm. So that's something we're going to have a crack at today. This is the new section of the show. It's called Budget Beer Review. Budget Beer Review. Budget this, Beer Review. This may or not be a recurring theme. It might not happen every episode. It might happen three times an episode. Mm. Uh, we're going to find out anyway. The first beer that we're going to review, which is Steamrail Pale Ale. Sponsor us. Yeah. <laughs> it's a brilliant, brilliant beer. And cheers with a Steamrail. Cheers. Okay, so I'm just going to read out of this book. We can fill it in as Mm. we go. Uh, But yeah, today we are reviewing the Steamrail Ghost of the... Uh, Ghost of Ire. Yeah. Ghost of Ire. Mm. Ghost of Ire. Steamrail Ghost of Ire Pale Ale. uh, Brewed in Australia. She's pretty tasty. Mm. She's Mm. cheap and thus it fits into the budget beer review. The first category is looks. How is the color of the beer? Well, it's in a beer bottle. It's in a brown bottle, which I think is actually the first thing on my list that I like. I don't like green bottle beer. Green bottle beer is for uh, bad humans, Mm, I mm. think. I think it tastes awful. Okay, so would you call that unappealing, average, or appealing? I would say appealing. The look look in general is a good look. Nice light green combined with uh, the brown bottle is a good look. She gets a tick from Seppi and Yaks. Mm. Uh, head doesn't apply but I will always write not enough head <laughs> because it's a <laughs> dumb works, jokes yeah. because yeah it's in a bottle it doesn't count uh, carbonation I almost think that's like the perfect amount of carbonation hold that's... on hold on hold on <laughs> <laughs> no it's pretty good it's pretty good pretty good it's easy to drink I think as well okay if there's such a thing as over carbonated beer I've never had it but it must be I awful I absolutely have um, um, yuck yeah. Overall appearance. In a, that's not the nicest looking it's beer. It's not that nice. It, it honestly has... It looks to, a bit shit. It looks shit. Okay, so I'm going to say it looks average. Because there's mm. unappealing average and appealing. I'm gonna say average. It just looks like beer. It looks it looks like a cheap beer. That's yeah. that's all it is. Yeah. Okay. Then we've got taste. Aroma. Give mm. it a sniff. Doesn't smell that nice. In my opinion. It smells, it smells like kind of hops beer. It doesn't smell like the nicest beer. 
No, no, the aroma is not that appealing. Mm. It's not bad though. No, it's not bad. It's just not very appealing. Palette. I think it feels fantastic in the mouth. <laughs> um, flavor. I think the flavor is lovely. I think the flavor is definitely. I think the flavor is definitely good. It's not the best, but it doesn't mm. say amazing. It just says good. Yeah, good. That's a very good. Uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> finish? What do they mean by finish? Finish. Aftertaste. I think it's a very pleasant aftertaste. Yeah, that's one of the best things about finding a cheap beer. Uh, is that doesn't actually, taste like old Vegemite afterwards. Yeah, it's because it's, for the most part, drinking it is actually, you know, it's, you, you get past your taste buds fairly quickly, right? So there's mm. not actually a real, like, oh god unless it's truly bad you can kind of stomach that past. You can get, you can get past it. Yeah. But if, it ta- if there's a bad aftertaste, then yeah, it's really hard it's to get really into it. It's really hard to get into it, yeah. And we've gone through a couple of these uh, in the past. Boxeroos. There's a few boxes. Steam Rail sponsor us. Okay. Drink Thank ability. You. Will we drink it again? Well, this is the fucking Fifth. 11th time. This uh, scaling system is out of 20. Mm. Oh, so we get to count up the points. Is that how yeah, it is? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. 16 out Hell of yeah. Yeah, that's a great score. 16 out of 20. Mm. This has been the Budget Beer Review. So on to the topic today. The topic is somewhat similar to the last topic that we were talking mm. about, uh, not last week, but the week before. Well, we talked about advertising in the most recent one. Yeah, we talked about yeah. advertising and marketing and all that kind of stuff. And we'd mentioned how if you have good enough marketing, you can get away with marketing a product that's substandard. Exactly. And funnily enough, we ran across exactly this most recently. Uh, we saw a piece of artwork uh, or you know a musician's kind of uh, let single. me let me let me say this a person that we know to be a, a talented musician put out uh, his, his own uh, his own single and music video and it was very bad mm. it was mm. very bad but it had quite a big uh, it had quite a big reaction um, and a lot of shares a lot of likes a lot of people tagging other people in it mm. And me and Yaks were quite astounded by this because we just thought it was the most amateur piece of garbage. Yeah. And basically this podcast is justifying our opinion. Uh, (laughs) So, yeah, we're debating it. We're going through the stairs because I was interested in the way that it got attention despite the fact that it wasn't very good. So today the topic that we're talking about is art versus media. Uh, Which is and what, what is what and how do you define them and where's the line strike? Yeah. And we worked it out. We sat down and we actually worked it out. I haven't heard anyone talk about this before, but we have worked it out. Worked. Okay, so art versus media. What do we mean? They're often presented as the same thing, but we're here to tell you that they're not the same thing. Mm. Because the argument mm. stemmed mm. from me saying, is art subjective? And I said, no. I think some art is is significantly worse than other art. Mm, mm. Uh, and I don't think it's subjective. And uh, yes, most art is subjective, but there's certain tiers that is defined by, and I think some of the lower tiers, you're looking at stuff that I wouldn't consider art. Mm. And uh, it's a very blurry line, but we're trying to figure out what is what. Whereas I said that all art is entirely subjective. It's completely up to the personal tastes of whoever it is. So we had a discussion based around that. And it brought out some interesting things. It brought out some really good points about uh, the different kinds of media. And that's why we say art versus media now, because there is definitely a difference between the two. We worked that out. And for the most part, it seems to be, in a nutshell, that art is very much when you're looking or when you're sort of just going purely on self-expression and media is a product to engage other people. Yeah. And obviously there, there is some crossover but uh, mm, the, mm. the first thing we want to talk about is just kind of going through some of these things before we get into the Example bigger discussion. Sort of yeah, 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 yeah. So we've got film, music, and, and fine arts is, mm. is probably the most common ones that you'll find in your day to day. Yeah. So let's start with with film. What is art and what is media? media. Yeah. So I'm going to go straight to the the obvious one. Uh, let's talk about like the Marvel films mm-hmm. because they're like the you know. Oh, we do love them. Yeah, you know, they're good. We do love them. But I would consider those media yeah. um, with different bits of art. Mm, I think, yeah, you can look at something like the Avengers franchise and films as a media product. At its, at its sort of base core, at the end of the day, it's there to, to hit big in the box office. Yeah, it's there to make money mm. and it's to sate customers yeah. or consumers. And it uses artistic 
points and integral kind of uh, motifs to achieve that goal. I agree. Yeah. But it's, it's, I think for me, the difference is um, how strategic things are. Because uh, again, if it's art, you know, it's more about making something that you strongly believe in. Mm. I'm not saying these guys mm. don't, but I'm just saying like, if, you know, if you watch a superhero film, it's origin story, first battle, character development, second battle, character fails, then triumphs, third battle, victory. Mm. That's like every fucking superhero movie you've Except ever seen for in Infinity life. War. Which is great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know if everyone's seen it. Um, but you can def- so you can definitely see how artistic decisions can influence media products and make really good uh, products based on that. Mm, yeah. Whereas like other films, I don't know why, but the, f- the first one, like an art film that popped into my head was the movie Her. Do you remember that one? And it's all oh, um, it's the one where he falls in love with the doll or he's in he's no quite he's, quite he's got love. like an ai girlfriend oh it's a siri yeah, one yeah. he falls yeah, in love with yeah. siri yeah because i remember there's one he's in love with the sex doll or something and there's yeah, another yeah. one he's in love with the ai right so it's the ai okay but yeah i don't know why that that just comes off more to art as me because it was i think it's the difference between franchising for films mm, it's like mm. franchising and then there's independent films mm, because i mm. love watching one movie and then it's just resolved at the end mm. and a we single, don't single tale you know we don't get that as much anymore it's mm. it's always kind of like I think it started with Harry Potter, like kind of like how much money can we fucking rinse out of this? Because that went on for a long time. I don't know if it started there, but that's a very good example of it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. yeah I know, but I feel like maybe that's what triggered it for this particular generation. For the generation, yeah, because yeah, sure. there was yeah. like trilogies and shit. But the, I think the difference in terms of like art for Harry Potter and like the Marvel films is Harry Potter feels a bit more art based to me because it's one person's creation. Mm and there's a start and an end yeah it's and, and it's stylized and it's very yeah. it's very original mm. you know it did a lot of things that other people hadn't done super original in fact there yeah. is there is no other tale like harry potter which yeah. is unusual don't you yeah. think like because that and and you're quite right like that's another example of how an artistic motif can uh, can appeal to a mass audience as a product yeah because somehow jk rowling made this product that was intensely desirable sorry or mm. made this artistic expression that was intensely yeah. desirable yeah and yeah. it didn't feel like contrived it no, didn't feel like no. she was trying to mm. just kind of jerk money out of people it's it just, very uniquely original like, yeah, yeah which is i think is the difference mm. and yeah the, the marvel films while i absolutely love them they they feel very you know i know what i'm getting it's mm. like i'm getting like a a big hollywood last bo- yeah. blockbuster like it's that's exactly, action yeah. with with probably some very bad romance themes mm. in there a million cameos like yeah you know, yeah lots of easter works, eggs yeah. and you know it, it's and you enjoy it based on that yeah but i'm getting, i'm not yeah. i don't consider mm-hmm. it art but i yeah it's hard it's so hard to quantify these things yeah it really is so that i mean that's in film you get some pretty stark differences is kind of what we're saying is that you get like art house film that you know like Sippy so says that appears in one iteration and then it's gone yeah. forever and then you get you know the, yeah. the superhero like, trilogy think of anything yeah. from the Sundance film festival yeah like if you've seen yeah. that beautiful movie uh, Whiplash you haven't seen it right I have not that seen it really bothers yeah. me because it's so good I will but it's it. just like yeah. a movie about you know, I'm, I'm going to assume that listeners have seen it if they haven't seen it go watch it mm. it's one of the absolute best music films that have ever happened uh, kid plays drums that's the summary of it it's just about a kid playing drums and it's like this is art because it's I don't know why. That's the hardest part. Well, that's what we're discussing now is how how do know, we how it differs. Yeah. yeah. So there's some more examples. So music is something that we know quite a bit about, both mm. being musicians for a reasonable amount of time. And it's very easy as well in music to see the difference between the quote unquote artists and the quote unquote, I don't know, media professionals or whatever you mm. want to call them. So I, I mean, intrinsically, I think of immediately with someone who's both an artist and very successful as something like Bjork, because I know ah, she's, that's a great she, example. yeah, she's very successful artist that has also got a massive, you know, media approach, and there is a huge show. I've actually seen it live. It's but very I, good. I wouldn't yeah. con- consider like her. It's not media to me. No, like, that's like the thing. It, is she's more leaning towards art, the art you know, side. Like of it might, yeah, it might yeah. branch out from the music, but it still comes mm. across as art. So there's still there's still something there then 
Because like then you then you think about an artist like like one of these kind of name brand pop artists that you see fucking you know f- from the nineties you get the Spice Girls and Five and things like that and they were very, you can tell you look at them and you go like well there is a there is a concept that a producer had mm. that we're going to put this together and we're going to achieve objective criteria and that's what's going to make it yeah. successful yeah uh, if you're musically illiterate pop music has been under fire from anyone who's even remotely interested in the art side of things mm. f- since for a very long time yeah. because it's very simple it's the same rhythms it's the same tempos it's the same arrangements it's the same keys they're the same amount of time you know they're designed so they can be blended interchangeably uh mostly like if you're listening to dance music and stuff that is literally yeah. designed to okay we need to leave this amount of time at the end of the song so it can blend into the next song mm. that's why all the structures are shaped the way they are so that to me is a very kind of carbon copy product opposed to a, a piece of art which is self-expression and doesn't have those things that that it necessarily needs to do yeah 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 because you do get what what you get a lot of the time in music is the artists or the what you get is the artists who will say you know fuck the profit fuck the exposure fuck everything i'm just going to do what i feel internally yeah. and that's the true self-expression you know part of it and then you will conversely get on the other side of it is you'll get the people going, no, to make this thing, mm. we need this amount of things with this amount of singers and this kind of backing track and that all the rest of it. Yeah. But you will find that the people who take the art and bring it, you know, bring it to the people opposed to pumping out products, they're, they're almost always going to do better in, in terms of music. Like NWA is a great example. They did exactly what they were told not to do, did extremely well mm. because they, you know, they, they had a vision in mind and they pursued it and they did it regardless of success or anything like that. Yeah. It just happened to work out extremely well for them. They did exactly what they want for their mm. own reasons and it worked out. And it connected They, they didn't people. go out yeah. and be like, we're going to make this, this yeah. album and it's going yeah. to sell so much. They were just like, we're going to make exactly what we yeah want. we're gonna do exactly what which is the artistic approach so it's kind of again like there are blurred lines but it's this seems to be the spectrum is that you can lean towards the artistic side or you can lean towards the media side mm. but at the end you're sort of always on the same spectrum because if you're producing art or music and you're sharing it like if you're putting it out to people and i think of music in particular and trying to get people to buy it or come to your shows then in some way you are involved in the media like yeah. that's that's sort of like a baseline. Yeah, but yeah. I think I think you come from one direction or the other. Yeah, yeah. It's kind yeah. of like you're coming at from a, you know, trying to profit or expand or improve your business or brand or whatever it might be, mm. or you're just going, this is my thing, take it or leave it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, last last one for the initial examples is just the fine art stuff. Mm. Probably the one we're the most uneducated on, so we'll try and keep it brief. So the fine arts are things like painting, sculpting. That's you, it. <laughs> painting, sculpting. Uh, <laughs> what else is well, there? What else? There is one more. Photography doesn't count, yeah, does it? Photography, no, it doesn't. Photography does, does yeah, count? Yeah, fine oh, yeah. art, yeah. And I defended these art forms, uh, whereas Yax had a differing opinion. Mm. But my opinion was that mostly, uh, I'm not going to say 100%, but mostly this is art opposed to media. Mm. Because there's less rules involved, you know, with film and music, there's always these very specific things you have to do like uh it needs this many choruses or we need this many action action sequences and rada 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 whereas art is kind of just like i made a thing and then someone may or may not purchase it Mm. or you never sell it but we're going to kind of talk about the the fine arts and the selling of and those kind of things i can't i honestly can't agree i think there is a, a lot of artists might operate on that basis that they make something and then you know they make something and then regardless of what happens to it they just you know that's just their expression and you know give give it a take it or leave it you know to my knowledge there's a lot of art that gets created though with a specific intent of being a certain appealing to a certain audience just like music or film so the galleries and the exhibitions that i've been to a lot of the time you see art that has a specific style or genre or appeals to certain kind of things because they want it to sell so like if people are doing uh copies of you know amazing renaissance things or they're making sculptures that are made in a steampunk fashion for example they probably have in mind that they're like okay i want a person who likes steampunk with a lot of money to buy this 
Okay, yeah, immediately yeah. that doesn't feel like art when you when you say it yeah, like so that. Yeah, so and that's what I'm saying is that there's there's also the same. But that's straight up plagiarism. No, no. What, what do you mean? Oh, copies of Renaissance. Yeah. Okay, that that is no, no. Okay, so there's a good example. So like, if people recreate um, Renaissance style painting, is what I'm saying. I don't mean literally copy the same paintings. I mean make paintings of a Renaissance oh, okay. style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I don't like that it. though, yeah. I, and I don't see why people would pay a lot of money for that either when they can. You know, I'm, I'm assuming the people paying for this kind of stuff are fairly wealthy. Mm. You think they just get real Renaissance paying because a that has more prestige and generally with with fine art, that's what people are looking well, for. Well, again, then there's the spectrum and and a money sets this time. It's because buying a fish like actual Renaissance paintings that's absurdly expensive. Exactly. And if you can get you know something that looks of the style for two hundred bucks, and that's and that's what I'm saying is that artists and painters and sculptors are just like musicians and and directors and and actors is that they all have the same sort of spectrum. I used to live with a bunch of art students, so my experience has been very different. And the fact that every um, art gallery I went to was just so strange. Yeah, like you know, testing the boundaries. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So I've never been to any of the fancy. I've been to like art galleries where things aren't for sale. You mm. know, um, but like to the things where things are for sale or exhibitions. Rada rada rada. I've just only seen very strange stuff. My <laughs> favorite cool. one. My yeah. favorite one. I will never forget this. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine was like, you should come to the art gallery. It's really cool. I've got a piece there. And I was like, absolutely. Uh, it was like <laughs> a okay. couple of minutes away from my house. And I was like, cool. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. You know, I've been to a couple of these things before. They're, they're usually kind of fun. There's usually free wine. Get a bit drunk, walk yeah, around, yeah. make fun of some stuff. And I walked in and it was just this white room and there was like six things in it. And they were all just pink. And there was this one that I'll never forget. Okay. Because it was so stupid. Right. The theme was pink. I can't remember why. But there was this piece of paper with nothing written on it. Just stuck to a wall with a bit of pink tinsel hanging off it. And that was it. (laughs) And I looked at it for so long. Oh my god. And I was like, why is this here? Like, well, this is nothing. This is actually nothing. And there was no description or anything. It was just there, and it did not provoke any thought. It just made me go, what? (laughs) It provoked uh, confusion. Confusion, (laughs) yeah. That's the piece. It's called bewilderment. Yeah, Yeah, that was my favorite art experience. That's pretty good. So we'll move on. We'll move on. Mm. So with the next topic we want to talk about, we wanted to talk about uh, differing standards. And I just will briefly explain what we mean by that. But... Basically, the differing standards between what people perceive as media and what people perceive as art. Uh, and this ties back to the the uh, the video we mentioned very early on in the podcast, um, where we kind of perceived it as not not art. No, no. Or simult- We perceived it as simultaneously not art and a poor product. So we had a very low opinion of it. However, from what we could see on social media, it was being reacted to very positively. And yeah, it got us thinking is like, well, clearly we, although we're very critical and disdainful of this because we know you can do a lot better uh, or, you know, it's possible to do better than, than this is showing. There is, there is a subjective element to it and the, the standards of what people are willing to accept is also a bit different. Exactly. And, and it's so hard to struggle to find out whether it's just friends supporting this act or whether it's genuine interest Mm. but i find it so amazing because it was really bad like i'll I'll describe it briefly it's a it's a dude it's a white guy complaining about problems Mm. strumming an acoustic guitar so it's basically like my music yes but yeah but the thing is that (laughs) but it's it's, it was just so fucking cheesy and the lyrics were so bad the filming was so bad like good cameras good equipment Mm. Mm. but just shaky bad shots bad zooms just the very much unlike what we have presented uh in our new music (laughs) video uh as you will find out if you click we'll check a link below see the thing is so we looked into this a bit further because i wanted to know more about it and how the you know how people were reacting to it all about it it turns out that this particular thing was produced by a film company, like a certain company did this. And I was fairly shocked because I thought this is astonishing. Like, I, I can't see why any company will put their name to this. Like, I the, agree. Yeah, the, the equipment was clearly good because the quality of film was very good. But the content of the 
uh, actual piece or the single or whatever you want to call it was very bland and and the choices that were being made in terms of like location and style the style of shots like simply mentioned and things like even that even the theme of the music even the theme of it it was all it's very commonplace and, and in the right hands it could have been very good I think, I, it, I think it had elements of, of good you know material in there but the presentation of it was just so subpar that it completely took away any enjoyment and this is just the video itself the song itself I also didn't like based on just sort of the, the style of the vocals and the music and etc and things like that what it basically got us thinking though is like so clearly we don't like this and that's fine you know they often say that if, if one person hates it another person will love it and this turns out to be true on some level because a lot of people clearly were interested in it. Yeah, I just find that so astounding because mm. I sent it to some people as well and I was like... We did get second opinions, yeah, so that's true. Watch yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And my friend had the best comment. He said, um, his lyrical flow is so bad it sounds like he's reading a shopping list. <laughs> but like, and if we put out content, not, I'm not saying our content is perfect. No, okay. by all means. I'm not even saying it's good. Mm. I'm just saying it's much better than what we have seen in this particular example. Because we know, I can look at that video, I'm not a pro, like we've said, but I can look at that video and in immediately see the choices that were made there and how they could have done it better, mm. like, or how it could look more interesting or more uh, kind of involving to the audience itself. And that's, that's the whole thing, is that at the end of the day, uh, whether it's art or media, if you're sharing it in an environment, you're trying to get attention. But but the level of attention you get or the style of attention you get is very much yeah, derived from how good the product is or how good the media is. So like media is an objective format where, you know, you have the criteria, mm. you must achieve all these different shots or this quality of audio or that kind of thing there. And then art is subjective where you're like the theme and the actor's expressions and the you know uh the what you're talking about or what you're trying to deliver through your lyrics if that's art and that's subjective then technically this this video that we watched has both of those elements because it was shot in a good format of video and the content of it while we were very disdainful of it was actually you know it said something it had a meaning behind it we'll agree to disagree on that one because I just thought it was complete rubbish. See, uh, that's, I didn't think yeah. there was any redeemable qualities to that. I, I honestly would have preferred to have not seen it. <laughs> <laughs> what a review. Yeah. Why can I not unsee this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, okay. you know, uh, so media is objective, art is subjective. That's what we're trying to say here. Okay, so at the end of the day, the clip that I watched, I, I wouldn't watch it again in, a, in a, uh, any other way than an al analytical format. But I was curious as to why people were interested in it. And I think the the key thing that it comes down to as well is the level of uh, artistic talent or, you know, um, integrity or whatever you want to call it, that, that sort of how deep you go into your messages and all that kind of things and how strongly you feel about it matters so much when you're creating art and very little when you're creating media to some extent yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it seems like media is very methodical yeah methodical very exact, exact yeah. word it's kind of like we yeah. need to tick all these boxes mm. whereas art is just like hey look a box um <laughs> moving on yeah. moving on to the last little section um the big goals, the goals of art versus media. Yeah. What are the goals? So uh, maybe maybe start on YouTube uh, for media goals because that seems like the easiest place to start. Oh, absolutely. You know, YouTube yeah. is is the heart of it's current the, content. Yeah, it's the, I was going to say it's the first great bastion of uh, content creators. Mm. It's where a lot of these uh, the big names in in um, content creation got their got their fame from. Uh, I watch a lot of YouTubers myself. Like, it's probably one of my main media sources, actually, Absolutely, is, is yeah. YouTubers. Like, they make a lot of things that I'm interested in. So the, the whole objective of when you're online in an environment like YouTube is to get attention to some degree. Because if you're getting views and you're getting subscribers, repeat views, in other words, repeat customers, yeah. that makes you money, essentially. You yeah. have an audience and by, when you have an audience, you can sell them things or, you know, you can do affiliate marketing to them, all those kind of things. And 
you know, we've talked about this in the past, how at the end of the day, uh, we want these builders to listen to the podcast in the same way that other people want people to buy soap. It's just, it's business, that's how it works. And the great thing about an environment like YouTube is it is pretty business focused, you know, focused around that idea of exposure and attention. Everyone always wants more. We're here to help each other get more attention, do the thing. Yeah. And then where it kind of, the backlash comes in is, you get these people that are like, hey, smash that like button. Let's, hey guys, how you doing? Let's fucking blah, 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 blah. And that obnoxious kind of attention grabbing is really unpleasant. Also, I think a big backlash of, you know, specifically that that uh, strain of media uh, and their goals, you know, they're striving for success, they're striving for attention, money, exposure, rada, 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 is they have to bring out content so often that a lot mm. of it becomes so meaningless. Whereas, you know, when you start any project, it's all based on passion. Uh, you're making this thing. I think most media starts this way. Not mm-hmm. all of it. Some of it's just straight up shit. Mm. That's fine. But, you know, most things, it's like, uh, you know, like gaming channels. They're like, I really like this game. I'm going to do a uh, Let's Play. And they do it. And they're like, that was cool. Hey, it got some attention. I might do another one. And then it's kind of like, should I need to do one of these every week? I don't even like this game. Mm. You know, so that, I think that's a huge backlash for that kind of thing. And I think, yeah, that, I think yeah. that applies to most things. Like, it applies to art too, doesn't it? It yeah, applies yeah. to music mm. amazingly. Like you have to bring out an album every two years, but I've been on tour for mm. two years. I don't I've got I nothing have, to say. I have yeah, no I've opinions. Got, yeah. Well, you better make something up, yeah. son. And that's how you get shit albums. That's exactly mm. why most bands flop after album three. Yeah, that sounds you know? about right. Because they yeah. run out of things to shit talk about. Their life's real good now. And they're like, oh, I'm assuming yeah. it's, a, it's a kind of sad band. You know, not every <laughs> band is sad. Just the ones I listen to. <laughs> but that's that's a big part. So YouTube has a very uh, media focused environment. It's about creating entertainment for the large part and about people garnering attention based on their views or their activities or what they do. Yeah. And it's usually episodic because you have individual videos that are pre-recorded and then yeah. stored on a channel and you have um, live streaming as well, which is a, a different form of attention. Like that's a kind of thing that you do to engage with your audience. But all of these different styles of of media are all based around the idea that you you want attention or you want that kind of thing and in an artistic format it becomes a little bit harder i don't watch a lot of artistic uh youtube channels for example i definitely don't watch yeah. any um youtube is not a place i go to for, for art. art no no you don't think about it that way but although i think they exist yeah oh, they yeah, definitely do it's just there. not what i'm interested in watching no. on youtube although i lie i've literally watched bob ross fanatically Bob Ross like, yeah. is media, though. It is, though, isn't it? And that's, it yeah, see, there you go. Listeners, that is an the absolute crux of what we're talking about here is where do art and media cross, or art versus media, as you talk about Bob Ross, great guy, great show, but is his show art or media? Well, it, it's, mm. it's not even a conversation. I can tell you exactly what Bob Ross is about. He's painting so people can get high and think it's really funny. <laughs> As someone, oh my god! As someone who has oh, got an idea for it, really yeah. fucking high, and watch and Bob watch Ross. Bob Ross. Uh. It is the funniest thing I've ever watched. <laughs> Jesus! I promise you, the bit, and if you're a Bob Ross fan, where he's like, and now we're just gonna like wipe our brush off a little bit, uh, and he does yeah. it on the thing, and it's like, tuk, tuk, and I just beat the devil out of it. Yeah. That's what he says every single time. It's I mean, just laughable. Yeah. Fuck, I have cried so many times during Bob Ross. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's the episode title yeah. i have cried so many but times is, does that make it art Jury, yeah or is it media it. it's it's impossible to know yeah but i think you can form form opinions on certain things and i think everyone's going to have different opinions which you know does make it somewhat subjective mm. but i think it is that opinion of of trying to establish what is art and what is media but yeah artists art goals like i think the goals of an artist are to create something you're proud of like your self-expression has is to do a lot with like something that meets your individual standards mm. it's less about what other people think of the art uh whether good or bad and more about like what meets your individual standards yeah yeah and i yeah i think it's it's about making something without anyone kind of putting anything on you mm. like you need to do this it's kind of just going ah oh, fuck all this stuff this is exactly what i want to make and so it's I think about individuality as well in that case it is as well. and yeah. it's also yeah. about kind of i reckon um, another yeah another 
intense thing in art is challenges because very frequently art is is about breaking the status quo and making something that is challenging you know the the the, the formats that are established in media yeah. okay i think when you're looking at art versus media the the difference in goals is that art is entirely based on just completing this thing without any sense of success mm. i think success is removed success is only once you are happy with this thing and once mm. you're happy with a thing it's done whereas it's not like oh i hope it sells or i hope this profits me or i hope people like this you know it's just purely i am happy with this mm. i think that is like in its purest form that is what art is meant to be whereas media is meant to be i hope this expands my brand like i said i, I hope it engages with others i hope yeah, it, yeah. i hope it sells to an audience or i hope an audience finds worth in it and so that then you know when it comes to things like monetization and you know profit and things off uh whatever you're creating a media product is heavily geared towards making money yeah. and an artistic product is or an artistic expression is heavily geared towards satisfying yourself yeah yeah and that's why you know starving artist you know it's it's a it's real a stereotype thing. yeah it's a yeah. real thing because most of them are very reluctant to mm. conform or do anything like that i've got a lot of our friends back in new zealand and they're all absolutely broke and they make the weirdest stuff and i'm like this is great but i would never pay for it no and there's not yeah, much you could no, do about that no, really it really isn't so to answer the question that i'm sure you're all wondering at this point which is better is it better to be a successful media producer or a starving artist? What is the better choice? I have an answer to this. Yeah. What are you interested in? Mm. Uh, if you're what a, do you value? Like, a lot of people will, you know, kind of let the art slide a little bit to conform for media. A lot of people are just going to be like, fuck that. I'm only going to do art. And a lot of people will be like, oh, well, I've got artistic skills, but I'm going to apply them to media because it's more intelligent. Mm. So it depends on what you're after. If you're after fulfillment, and about satisfaction the about the goals exactly yeah. if mm. you're after fulfillment and satisfaction go for art you yeah. know if that's really what you want to do if you're after success and you're ambitious mm. go for media now these apply to both things you know it depends on how you view it but there is no right or wrong no to some level you can actually achieve both as well it's secret answer number three both <laughs> <laughs> why not both i mean if you consider uh a media you know uh, a media products a way to make money and then an artistic goal on the side that's that's one way you can do it but i personally think the best way to do it is to do both and do it into one project because frequently a balance of things or a combination of things is where you create the best things entirely and on that note I think we'll wrap it up there. I hope yeah. you guys like the budget beer review. Mm. I'd just like to mm. recap and remind you about the two times spicy video that we've put up on YouTube. Also, a disclaimer, we say some things that we don't actually believe. I think I, I feel like I kind of... In case it's not that. obvious, it is a parody track. It is satire. Yeah. It is fucking hilarious, in my opinion. It's the best thing I've created in a long time. Uh, I think we can rack up. Rap. There you go. Yeah, hit us up if you've got any more beers for us to review. We would love to try some more budget beers on the budget beer review. Be fucking tight. Check out the two times spicy videos called Ass So Fat. This has been the Sippy and Yaks show. Thanks very much for listening, and we'll see you all again next time. Bye.